Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How are you guys and girls doing? I hope you're doing great as always. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Also drop a like, subscribe if you like the content, and check out the top right eye as well for more links. This is a video I've been wanting to do for a while because I get a lot of requests to explain pointers and what pointers are. And I, I've seen a lot of explanations on pointers and I don't really agree with a lot of them because they always portray this as being very complicated and very hard to understand. But I disagree and I've, I've helped a lot of people understand pointers both in my mentor life and as well as through YouTube. So I want to make a video that focuses on this. So if you don't really understand pointers and you're struggling, try to watch this video. Uh, consider watching through the whole thing. You can see the points I'm going to go through. It's a very basic guide just to give you an explanation. And then from there, I hope that you'll understand them a lot better. What we're going to do is we're going to be using some drawings as well as explanations. So I'm going to start off with my explanation the way I usually do it. So, of course, pointers are very complicated probably in your mind and they're scary and everything is just, you know, revolves around pointers and it just makes everything so much harder. But what I want you to think is pointers being just like any other variable. So I assume by now you know what an integer is and you know what a string is, probably what a floating point variable is, any type of variable in C++. Usually you might think of it as something that holds something else, right? So if I give you a little drawing, this might be what is showing up in your mind. So you create your little int i, int my int whatever, like this, and you assign it the value 20. What happens then? Well, of course, you create an integer value in your memory, and you place a 20 in it. And whenever you try to access this, it will give you 20. This is pretty much what an integer is. The same thing with a string. If this were a string and I put it to whatever, uh, your own name, for example, that will be stored in here and you would be able to access it through the name of this variable. So let me tell you this. What happens if I tell you that a integer isn't much different from a pointer? Or a pointer isn't much different from a string or any other type of variable. The only thing a pointer does differently is it actually doesn't hold the value of whatever you give it. It holds the address to that that variable. So to explain this better, let me just go ahead and create a little pointer here. So this will be our little box signifying our pointer. And this will be a int pointer my pointer. And I'll assign it something. So say somewhere in our memory, some sometime in our program before this, we created another integer called I should have kept the old one, but we can just make a new one. Int my name. And we said, or not my name, int uh, string, no, int my age. That would be appropriate. So my age is 30. I create this variable here. Of course, it holds 30 here. But this box in your memory, your memory is built up out of a bunch of boxes, right? It's a big sectioned out box. So a bunch, a big box with a lot of smaller boxes in it. And each of those smaller boxes in them have their own addresses, just like a living situation right if you have a, a big apartment building each little box in that apartment building itself has an address has probably a code and the whole box itself has an address whatever but you can think of that as each apartment having an address is a way to communicate to that specific apartment that's how this works so say that this address is something like x 23 c 23 okay a fat finger there this is like c 20 this is somewhere else in memory it's like c 424 and these addresses are accessible. Okay, like I told you, a pointer holds an address. It doesn't hold a value. So when I say that my pointer equals my age like this, what happens then? First of all, we're going to go through what this is. Now, the, there are two operands here. We have an operator called the address operator and a dereferencing operator. So the address operator always gives you the address of a variable. So whatever variable you have, you can just do a stdcl. I'll show you in a little bit some examples and you'll get the address to that value. You'll get the address to your apartment, for example. Okay, the reference is used for pointers. So if you have a pointer that is pointing to something, an address to something, you dereference that pointer 
it actually goes into that apartment, for example, knocks on the door, goes in there, and prints out whatever is inside. So we're going to work with these examples here. I'm going to show you what's going on. So whenever you do address my age, your pointer doesn't hold 30. It holds the address to wherever 30 is stored, wherever this variable is. So that would hold C23. That's what's holding in my pointer. Now, if I were to do an address operator before my pointer and try to print that out, that would give you C424 because that's the address where this pointer is in the memory. So there you go. Very basic fact. Pointers don't hold very values themselves. Their values are addresses to different variables. That's what they're meant to hold. It looks scary with all these nice operators, all this stuff, but it's not scary. It's not hard. It's not complicated. I promise you, once you practice this a little bit, you'll see that this little variable only, this little icon here, asterisk, only tells the computer that I'm creating a pointer. So don't store regular types, store addresses to these types. So let's start off with our examples. Now we talked a lot about pointers. Now you kind of know what a pointer is. Let's make a simple int pointer for real. So I'm going to make a simple int pointer here, int my pointer. So let's do the same example here. We have my pointer, but before that, I'm going to create an integer my age equals 30. And my pointer is now going to point to my age. That's why I'm giving this the address variable or uh, operator, sorry. The address operator, now you understand why you're using it because otherwise, if I do my age like this, it's not gonna work because that's not an address. It's holding 30, it's holding an integer value. I want the address to wherever this is stored. And I know the error messages might seem very scary and everything, but if you read this, it's just saying that it can't hold this type. This is not the correct type for a pointer. What is the type for a pointer? Guess. It's the address of something. That's why it's complaining. So when I give it an address to something, say, okay, it doesn't matter. As long as it's an integer and a variable, I can get the address to that. So now when we have this, we're going to start printing out things. So I'm going to do a std c out my age, first of all, like this. And I'm going to tell you what's being printed out. So my age variable value is being printed out here. Good. I'm going to control D this. Now I'm just going to cut it right here in a second and just tell you what's going on. So I'm using Visual Studio 2019, just a simple new project pointing or coding here. If you don't have Visual Studio, you can download it through uh, Microsoft's homepage. Just search for Visual Studio 2019 community or you can go to a homepage called cpp.sh and this is a compiler running on a server so you can code here without installing anything and then it might bug out on you sometimes so you have to restart this but usually it works pretty fine so just a little side note let's continue on simple int pointer and now we're gonna do my age variable address is that how you spell address i think so guys i think so my dudes and girls so look at this how do you get an address to a variable? Any variable. You can try this. You can play around with this. This is the address operator. Okay. I just put that that and operator just in front here. And we'll see what the address is. So that is that. Next thing we're going to print out is we're going to print out the my pointer value. Now, what is the value for my pointer? Remember, don't think about this. Think of this as being an address container. So it's obviously containing the address to my age. So thinking of this, let's see my pointer variable value. And it's also a, var a variable. Sorry, it's also a variable. It's a pointer. That's all it is a pointer variable to a specific type. So how do you get that? Well, you know, the value of my pointer is just like printing out my age. You don't have to write anything in front of it. You just do my pointer. Then you'll get whatever value it's holding. And that will be the address to my age. Now, the next thing is the address to the actual pointer. All right. So my pointer variable address. And we can see that by using the address operator in front of my pointer. So, of course, the pointer is a variable just like an integer. It has to be stored somewhere and has its own address. The only thing is it's containing an address to something else. So let's do one more thing because we can do one more thing with pointers. And that's, of course, to get the value of whatever my pointer is pointing to. 
So in our drawing, that case would be, it would go in, whenever you write the dereference operator in front of my pointer, this little thing, not when you're creating it, this is different. When you're creating it, you're telling it you want a pointer to an integer. But when you're using it after creating it and use this asterisk, my pointer asterisk like this, pointer asterisk, dereference, this will in turn trigger something. So what it will do, it will go into my age or my pointer, see which address it's containing, go to that address, find my age variable, find that variable and print out whatever that variable is holding at this address. Okay, that is my explanation to that. So how do you do that? Well, instead of that, we're going to use the dereference operator. And I'm going to comment that for you, dereferencing operator. And this is the address operator. And so is this. Good. And now we have a few things to try out. All right. So let me just do a little thing here. I have a few things going here, which I'm going to talk about later. Just pointers on pointers, but we can wait with that. Return. Before we return, I'm going to do a system pause to just make sure we can see the output. So let's go ahead and check this out. If I run my application here, we're going to see that it's going to actually just print all of these things out for us and we'll be able to see what's going on. So let's go here and check what's going on. My age variable value 30. Very simple. It's 30. My age variables address is 00dbf71c. Remember this. All right. My pointer was then set to my age's address. What happens when we print out my pointers variable value? Well, you'll see that it's the same as my age's address, 00dbf71c, they're identical, all right? My pointer variable's address itself is different, 00dbf710. That's different because the pointer's address, the pointer is being stored somewhere else in memory. Then we have my pointer variable's value, it should say here, or variable's dereference value, which will be 30 in turn because just like I showed you, it gets the value from my age. So in this way, you can experiment for yourself and see what's going on. So always remember the dereferencing operator and the address operator. You can play around with these and experiment as you want. Now we'll go through a few more quick tips on pointers and the ways to use them, simple ways. This isn't an advanced tutorial. This is to get your basics going so you know what it is and you can go experiment on your own. So let's do two different types. First of all, there are different standard types. We have integers, we have uh, std string. All right, you can do using namespace string if you want, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna include string here. I'm gonna include a vector as well, okay? Now there are billion different ways you can use string or uh, pointers. So if I make a std string pointer my string equals null pointer, I want to just tell you what's going on here. Let me do a like that. Like this. No, int my int equals 23. Sorry about this. I was confused a little bit. std string pointer. My int will also be. Hold on. Let's do it like this. My int my string is not a pointer that is actually my name like that and then we'll do the same way now we want this is two different types so let's make a float as well for three my float equals uh 12.54 we have three different types of variables here we want to create pointers to all of these the way you do that is you always give it the type first then the pointer Telling the computer that you want to create a pointer variable, my int pointer to give it a name. And you want to, of course, give it the address of anything here. So address my int. Let's do a std string pointer. My string pointer equals the address of my string. And then we're going to do a float pointer my float pointer equals address to my float. Okay. As you can see, we have pointers now pointing to 
our different types. But if you give my string pointer, for example, my int, try to assign it my int address, it's not going to work because it knows that at my int, there's an integer stored. And this pointer is created for strings. So you have to maintain the type here. You cannot change switch between types like that. All right. But what you can do is this. So if I had my int my int 2 here equals 65 and this works the same for every other type what happens is you can use one pointer to switch between these addresses just like you can change the value of my int 1 or this one and my int 2 you can change it at any time later on like this my int 2 equals 43 for example that will set it to 43 it just in the same way you can change your integer pointers or any pointers value at any time so remember it is just like any other integer variable where it ha holds a value or any other type of variable so let's try that out let's say we have my int i'm going to remove the two other ones because you can try printing these out on your own if you want i'm just going to do this example so std c out my int pointer dereferenced i want to see what value it is holding right so this value is of course there we go um let's see there we go my end pointer sorry about that so once you do my end pointer here to print out the value of it it should give us 23 because my end pointer is pointing to my int but let's change that after this printout let's go ahead and do my int pointer equals the address of my int 2 right and let's do std see out again of this whole thing so i'm just going to copy paste this like that and we're going to go ahead and print this out so what do you think is going to happen guys what do you think is going to happen well we're going to get first of all 23 because it was first pointing to my end and then we're going to get 65 which it was later changed to so it's not a constant you don't have to keep one value throughout but when you change the value it will be changed you can't hold two addresses at the same time remember that so once you do that you should be able to experiment with this and have fun the next thing is going to be change a pointer uh, value pointers value okay pointers value by that i mean whatever it is pointing to that variable's value this is what I want to do. So let's say that I have an integer called my money equals, let's say I have two gazillion dollars. Okay. And I have an int pointer pointing to my money pointer. And that is pointing to my money. Okay. And of course we can get the value. We can uh, get the address to this value. We can get the address to the pointer. But what we haven't tried yet is to actually change my money through my pointer my money pointer so first of all what we're going to do is we're going to do my money pointer here dereference it or we can just straight up do this my money just put out my money first of all here and then let's change it but not by doing my money equals to something let's do my money pointer equals to uh, let's say someone stole a lot of my money, so I only have 2,000 left. And let's see what this is complaining about. This is something you might try to do. And to change something, remember, you don't want to change the address to my money pointer because you're directly accessing my money pointer when you're not giving it any dereference uh, operator here. So that's why when you do my money pointer like this, you are trying to change the address. You don't want to do that. You want to go in to whatever this is pointing to and change its value right so when you dereference it like this it will tell the computer okay go to whatever address i'm holding here which would be my money and change that value to 2000 so let's try to print out my money here after this change and let's run it and we'll see that we'll have a gazillion dollars here and then only 2000 left and we did that through the pointer so you can change values through pointers like that that's very good to know. Now we're going to go on to one of the last points here is that you're probably going to use pointers with your own class objects and you can do this. So we're going to make a simple little class here, class square. Okay, class square or class person. Let's just say class person. 
nothing special let's do a public let's do everything public here public uh public person int age like that and let's do a this or age int age equals or just int age sorry about that age equals age simple very simple class right just one variable and a constructor to a class so if you haven't done classes before you can come back and watch this afterwards but this will actually allow us to create a person object person uh person one and we will say that his age is 30 just like mine boom so we created a person object now how do we create a pointer to this i'll let you guess what do you think what do you guys think how do you do this how do we do it before right so do a person pointer my person pointer equals to the address of person one and that works just the same as everything else just the same just the same so if i would like to say stdc out person's age i can do two different ways i can do person one dot age and i can do my person pointer age and I'll explain what's going on here, why we cannot use a dot here. Because when you're working with pointers and you want to access a class variable, you cannot use the dot operator like that. You have to use a arrow operator like this. The details of that I'll go into in the advanced video. This is just to show you that it's working. Whenever you're working with a pointer, you have to go ahead and do the arrow operator. What you could do, I think, is the reference it and then go ahead and do that or there is a way to do that but we'll go through that in the advanced there's no point of me going in here confusing you guys so go ahead and try this out you'll see that it will work let's run this and you'll see that it will work so person j is 30 30 i just access that in two different ways for your own class object for user objects now you got a bunch of different examples here to work with i suggest you go and try that one some of the last pointers i want to give to you on this is that this can be used for arrays and it's very often used for dynamic arrays just remember that you don't know how, need to know what it's about or what it what it is just remember that there's something called dynamic arrays which this is used for and it's very important because you will learn that coming up uh, this is very basic right pointers are very basic but very flexible there's so much you can do with them there's so much that can go wrong you can lose a lot of things especially working with dynamic memory there's something called memory leaks that is because of pointers so master it by experimenting and trying it out and seeing what's going on okay it's used in most applications extensively so we use it a lot in c applications for mostly everything nowadays we use smart pointers and all that but this is called a raw pointer don't get it twisted uh, smart pointers are great you can use them but this is a good way to learn how memory management works and it's a good thing to know because in c if you ever work in c you're going to probably use something like this not exactly the same but it works something like this and this is manual memory management that we're talking about dynamic memory so remember that exactly like i wrote here dynamic memory handling that's what it's used for but most languages do it differently most languages like Lua, uh, Python, these scripting languages, Java, C Sharp, these don't have pointers in the same way. They don't have pointers. They use references. That's also a video we're going to do later. But you never have to worry about dynamic memory being lost, memory leaks, all this stuff, because the computer or the virtual machine that it's running on automatically handles that. C++ doesn't have that. It's very raw. It's very down to this very low level, like we say. So you have to do everything. That's why there are pointers and it's very risky, but it's very rewarding. And we'll go through more advanced things in the next video. Pretty much it for this one, guys. Thank you for sticking with me. Please check out all of these examples. Try them out. Hopefully you'll become an expert in pointers in this one video. I'm sorry that it was a long video. Hopefully you did like it. Uh, please drop a like, subscribe, like I said, if you did like it. And also check out the description box in the top right eye for links. And hopefully you learned something. I'll see you in the next one, right? Bye-bye.